This is episode number 12 of Purdue Sheep and Goat Topics, and I am Dr. Mike Neary, Extension Small Ruminant Specialist, Purdue University. In this episode, we'll cover ruminal acidosis in sheep and goats, how it occurs, how to treat it, and most importantly, how to prevent it. Ruminal acidosis is a metabolic disease caused normally by an overload of starches or soluble carbohydrates into the rumen. It is also sometimes called grain overload or grain poisoning. It is sometimes referred to as overeating, but is distinctly different from the bacterial condition called enterotoxemia, which is more commonly referred to as overeating. Sheep and goats are primarily designed to consume forages and fibers to obtain adequate amounts of energy for productive purposes. We often feed them some grain to improve performance, whether it be for growth, lactation, or to correct any energy deficiency of the forage the animals are consuming. Ruminal, ruminal acidosis is a common issue with sheep and goats that are fed a diet with grains. The higher level of the higher the level of grain intake, the more likely the condition of acidosis arises. Acidosis can range from acute to subacute at all gradations between those two. Acute acidosis is what occurs when, let's say, animals get into a grain storage area and engorge themselves in a short amount of time on a high starch feed stuff such as corn, wheat, barley. Subacute acidosis usually occurs when animals are intentionally fed high grain levels to increase animal performance. To set up how ruminal acidosis occurs, let's discuss briefly the microbial population dynamics in the rumen of a sheep or goat. The rumen contains a highly variable microbial population that is reflective of the diet the animals are consuming. For instance, the microbial population in the rumen of a sheep or goat that is consuming pasture or forage exclusively is markedly different than an animal fed a hay grain diet uh, in dry lot. When the diets of ruminant animals are changed quickly and the microbial population doesn't have adequate lead time to change and adapt to the new diet, digestive disturbances can occur. This is especially true when high levels of starch are introduced too fast. Starch is simply a concentrated form of sugars. The most common form of starch for sheep and goats are feed grains. However, high starch levels can be contained in other feed ingredients, such as potatoes, bread products, uh, some starchy vegetables, and even things like acorns. The digestion of starches produces lactic acid. If the ruminal microbial population contains inadequate numbers of lactic acid utilizing bacteria, or if ruminal absorption of lactic acid, is, lactic acid is inefficient, the pH of the rumen decreases or it becomes more acidic. This results in a number of conditions depending on how severe the pH drop is. In subacute acidosis, often the first symptom of acidosis is a depression of appetite. They simply don't eat with the same enthusiasm and may not clean up the grain containing feed mixture. There may also be some mild scouring, sore feet, and just general lethargy. More serious cases of subacute acidosis may include more severe feed refusal, more pronounced diarrhea, uh, possibly teeth grinding, and a low inclination to move and to be active. In acute cases of acidosis, the pH of the rumen may drop to 5 or even lower. Uh, the normal pH level in the rumen on a forage diet is in that 6 to 7 range, so it's a pretty marked decrease. This low pH or increased acidity can actually destroy many of the fiber utilizing bacteria in the rumen, and the important papillae that line the ruminal wall can be compromised. These papillae are important to good rumen health and are involved in absorption of nutrients and compounds that are produced in the rumen. In acute cases, it is very obvious the animal is distressed. They may have complete lack of interest in feedstuffs, severe watery diarrhea, and may even be in a state of shock. The mortality rate of animals with acute acidosis can be very significant. Acute acidosis is a medical emergency, and treatment often includes the drenching of the animal with a water-calcium carbonate, which is simply baking soda, mix, 
along with the administration of antibiotics and an anti-inflammatory. Even then, some animals can be lost. Prevention of subacute or acute acidosis is the most practical approach. Since grains or high starch feedstuffs are the source of the problem, controlling and mediating grain intake is the first and most important step. To prevent acute acidosis, make sure gates are latched securely, feed storage areas are secure to prevent animals entering them, or if you're, say, turning animals onto a harvested cornfield, make sure there isn't significant piles of grain from spillage. To prevent subacute acidosis, introduce grain slowly over a period of time to allow the rumen microbial population to adapt and be, to be able to handle grain in the diet. For instance, if we are adding grain to the diet of a sheep or goat, start at a small amount, maybe a quarter to a half a pound depending, and feed that amount for a two or three days. Then, after those two or three days, increase the amount for two or three more days, and you simply repeat this over a period of time. This is referred to as a step-up diet, and depending on the ultimate level of grain desired, it may take 10 days to 3 weeks to reach the desired level. A program like this can go a long way to help animals deal with grain in their diet, allow them to attain the higher performance that is desired over forage alone, and also minimize the possibilities of acidosis. Other strategies to help prevent acidosis include regular feeding times, minimize grain processing, feeding ruminal buffering agents, make sure there is adequate bunk space, uh, providing long stem hay, monitor, monitoring the weather, and keeping close track of animals' grain intake and enthusiasm for eating it. If corn needs processing, have it processed in as coarse a form as possible. Finally, ground grains are more likely to cause acidosis. Feeding buffers can help moder modulate the pH of the rumen and help, it prevent, help prevent it from decreasing to a level of acidity that causes acidosis. <clears throat> the most common buffer is calcium carbonate, which I mentioned earlier is simply baking soda. It can be mixed into the grain or offer, offered free choice for animals to consume. Making long stem hay available promotes cud chewing, helps re reduce rumen acid, and increases rumen health. Adequate bunk space so animals can eat comfortably helps even out consumption and prevents some animals getting more than their fair share. Changing weather can lead to changes in appetite and when animals are on a high intake of a grain diet, acidosis can be more likely. Regular feeding times that animals get used to prevent engorging behavior and help prevent acidosis. Feed grains are a great source of nutrition for sheep and goats provided they are used properly and precautions are taken to prevent or minimize acidosis. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sheep and Goat Topics. If you found it helpful, subscribe, rate it, and tell other sheep and goat producers about it.